All right, folks, I just finished watching the latest January 6th public hearing, and there was a lot of information there to unpack. I can't possibly recap all of it in this short video, so what I'll do is, uh, as I usually do, I'll advise you to watch the whole thing, but I want to share what I believe is the most significant moment from this entire event, and I know a lot of you are thinking that it's probably the end where they announced the subpoena, and we'll talk about that, but I actually think a different moment is much more significant. So let's watch and then I'll explain to you why I think this is so crucial. I remember maybe a week after the election was called, I popped into the Oval just to like give the president the headlines and see how he was doing. And he was looking at the TV and he said, can you believe I lost to this effing guy? So we just watched Alyssa Farah, White House Communications Director, tell all of us that Trump told her, can you believe I lost to this effing guy? That's huge. Because up until this point, we really didn't have evidence that Trump knew he lost the election. I was kind of 50-50 on this. I think that he probably knew he was lying, but at the same time, it's Donald Trump. I don't think that he has the mental fortitude <laughs> to be president. I never thought that, right? So there was this possibility in my mind that he believed the bullshit that he was espousing. But now we know that, no, he actually was knowingly and purposefully misleading people. Every time he claimed that the election was stolen, we now know that he knew he lost. So when it comes to criminal intent, this is that moment that they have against Donald Trump. He incited an insurrection at the Capitol knowingly under false pretenses. He spread disinformation. We now know that this is abundantly clear, and this is very, very significant. Because again, intent matters when it comes to criminal cases. In the event they do refer this to the Justice Department for prosecution or indictment or whatever they can do. This is huge. We now know he knows. Anytime he continues to spread this lie, we now know that he knows it's not true. He knows he lost and he's mad about it. So I, I think that that is really, really significant. Um, now, there's one other moment that stood out in terms of what Trump knew, but I want to read this article from The Hill that gives us uh, some additional context, which I think is important. So The Hill reports, former President Trump told his then chief of staff, this is embarrassing and I don't want people to know that we lost after the Supreme Court ruled against him on a key case about the 2020 election. Former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson told the House Select Committee investigating the January 6, 2021 Capitol riot. The lawsuit considered by the Supreme Court in December of 2020 was filed in Texas and challenged the presidential election results in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Representative Adam Kinzinger, a member of the January 6th panel, said Trump regarded the legal action as his last chance at success in the courts. Now, out of context, him saying this is embarrassing and I don't want people to know that we lost can be taken as him admitting that he knew he lost the election. But that right there within the proper context is not as clear as what Farah said, where he said, can you believe that I lost to this effing guy? Because there he's clearly talking about the overall election. But here, when he says this is embarrassing, I don't want people to know that we lost. Well, he can simply argue, well, I was referring to the Supreme Court case. I am embarrassed that we lost the Supreme Court case, lost in the courts. But also, you can make the argument that maybe at that point he believed that it was over and he could no longer challenge the results of the election. So at that moment, he realized he lost and he didn't want it to be known that he lost the general election. It's not that clear, though. What is clear is what Farah said, where he looked at her and said, can you believe I lost to this effing guy? That is very, very clear. And I think we'll go much further in proving criminal intent. Now, there were other moments that I think were really important from the hearing. There was message exchanges between the Secret Service. There was, I think, a fascinating video where they showed Nancy Pelosi along with Chuck Schumer, and they later met with Republicans. And they were making calls to governors trying to find ways to remedy the situation. And I, I don't necessarily know what they were trying to prove uh, other than Trump wasn't doing his due diligence. He was just sitting idly by watching all of this unfold on television while members of Congress were the ones who were trying to stop all of this nonsense. So I think that that's really what they were trying to show. But ultimately, I don't think that it's as significant as Farah's little 13-second snippet there. Now, the headlines are all going to be talking about the subpoena. 
Now, if you didn't watch it, this was the very last moment from the hearing where they voted for a subpoena unanimously. A recorded vote is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Cheney? Aye. Ms. Cheney? Aye. Ms. Lofgren? Aye. Ms. Lofgren? Aye. Mr. Schiff? Aye. Mr. Schiff? Aye. Mr. Aguilar? Aye. Mr. Aguilar? Aye. Mrs. Murphy? Aye. Mrs. Murphy? Aye. Mr. Raskin? Aye. Mr. Raskin? Aye. Mrs. Luria? Aye. Mrs. Luria? Aye. Mr. Kinzinger? Kinzinger? Aye. Mr. Kinzinger? Aye. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Chairman? Aye. The clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, on this vote, there are nine ayes and zero noes. The resolution is agreed to. Without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The chair requests that those in the hearing room remain seated until the Capitol Police have escorted members from the room. Without objection, the committee stands adjourned. Okay. So I think this is obviously really important. Issuing a subpoena to a former president is no small thing. Will he comply with that subpoena, though? Probably not. Um, will anything come of this? Will they get testimony from Donald Trump, even if he complies with the subpoena? Probably not. I mean, again, it's impossible to say, but he can plead the fifth. And that's kind of their basis for issuing the subpoena because they had 30 officials, I believe was the number. All plead the fifth, people close to Trump, so they were missing crucial details to conclude their investigation. Therefore, you know, that was the grounds for them issuing the subpoena to Trump. But if they get him before them, he's just going to plead the fifth. And furthermore, what I expect entirely is for him to fight the subpoena. And if it is the case that Democrats lose the House, then they will no longer have the power to fight Trump with this subpoena, you know, with the House of Representatives. So, Ultimately, it's a big deal, but I don't necessarily believe that this is going to amount to anything, and I really wish that they would have issued this subpoena earlier in this investigation because it seemingly extends this when they need to be wrapping it up right now because if Kevin McCarthy takes control as the uh, Speaker of the House, you know, this committee is going to go the way of the dodo, or if he lets it exist, you know, it's not going to have the autonomy that it has now. I'm not necessarily sure the specifics on what will or won't happen. This is all just me, like, you know, speculating, but they need to get this done now. So the subpoena, it feels a little bit too late in my opinion, but still, I do think that it's important so they can at least say that they tried to reach out to Donald Trump, and even if he doesn't comply, even if he does comply, but pleads the fifth to every single question, I do still think that this is a necessary move. So overall, my biggest takeaway, and perhaps you'll disagree with me, was that Trump now knows. We can no longer say, well, does he believe what he's saying? I get that it's Trump, and he's mentally unstable, and he's deeply, deeply unintelligent. Maybe he believes the election lies. Nope, we now know he knew he lost the election. And this is what they stated at the beginning of these hearings back in summer, but now they have proved it with Farah's testimony here. And I think that this is really substantial. Trump is knowingly spreading disinformation, even if this is killing democracy. And that is no small thing. And I absolutely hope that he is prosecuted because this can't stand. We can't have a president who is knowingly lying about the results of an election, especially now seeing what that does to democracy. So I'll leave that there. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.